Hi, this is Dr. I with a clinical chemistry review video on the trace minerals and those that are toxic to health. We're going to look at aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. So um, these are considered toxic or non-essential trace elements. They serve no function in the body, but they are of medical interest because many of them are toxic. Aluminum is used to make beverage cans, pots and pans, um, airplanes, siding, and roofing and foil. It is also found in consumer products such as antacids, astringents, buffered aspirin, food additives, cosmetics, and antiperspirants. Approximately 1.5 to 2% of inhaled aluminum is absorbed, and only 0.01 to 5% of the ingested aluminum is absorbed. The uh, absorption efficiency is dependent on the chemical form. The health effects is that it interferes with enzymatic processes. Signs and symptoms of aluminum toxicity will include encephalopathy, osteomalacia, or a plastic bone disease, proximal myopathy, increased risk of infection, microcytic anemia, increased left ventricular mass, and decreased myocardial function. It is measured primarily by ACPMS, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, and graphite furnace atomic absorption spectroscopy. Arsenic. Um, current and past uses of arsenic include pesticides, pigments, poison gases, ammunition manufacturing, semiconductor processing, and medicines, including some uh, treatments for leukemia. The um, exposure, it will be, it can be ingested in food, uh, in seafood, and um, in water, and can also be inhaled uh, exposure. The um, non-toxic organic forms of arsenic will clear rapidly, but the toxic inorganic forms will clear slowly and cause problems. Uh, it is non-essential uh, mineral. It, it has no known function in human physiology, and it can be toxic. Um, the toxicity, so exposure can lead to either acute or chronic intoxication, depending on the type of exposure. Um, acute intoxication, the signs and symptoms will be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, with like abdominal pain and stuff, pancytopenia, so like bone marrow depression, EKG changes, uh, encephalopathy, polyneuropathy, renal failure, and toxic hepatitis. Chronic forms are going to be hyperkeratosis, hyperpigmentation, uh, alopecia, cirrhosis, hepatomegaly, hypertension, peripheral vascular disease, tremors, and cancer. So that's all with chronic uh, exposure to arsenic. The uh, inorganic form produces symptoms, uh, and it can be lethal. And arsenic trioxide is odorless and tasteless, and that's often the poison used uh, that can be used to kill people. Uh, the organic species of arsenic are relatively non-toxic and easily cleared by the body. It is primarily measured using ICPMS and graphite furnace AAS, and but then also hybrid generation atomic absorption spectroscopy. Cadmium, the it is the principal industrial uses of uh, cadmium include the manufacture of pigments and batteries, as well as metal plating and plastic industries. In the U.S., the burning of fossil fuels such as coal or oil and the incineration of municipal waste materials. Uh, will constitute the largest source of airborne cadmium exposure. Um, it is inhaled in tobacco smoke and ingested in food. Uh, you will absorb 10 to 50 percent of what is inhaled and 5 percent of what is ingested and you excrete 90 percent of it in feces. The health effects this is obviously not essential, no known function and is toxic. Toxicity, you will see renal dysfunction, nasal, epithelial, and lung damage, and respiratory distress, obviously if it's inhaled, and uh, ingested uh, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, uh, but you have to ingest uh, pretty significant amounts. It is quantified by uh, graphite furnace AAS and ICPMS, and it can also use ICP AES. In blood, cadmium is found mostly in the red cells, 10% of the red cells, so you would want to do a whole blood analysis. Lead is used in the production of storage, uh, yeah, of storage batteries, ammunition, solder, and foils. It was once used extensively as an additive in gasoline, and it was present in many paints that were manufactured before 1970, so it can be in like old houses and stuff. 
Um, the exposure to lead can be uh, via the respiratory or GI system. You will absorb 30 to 40 percent of what is inhaled, and the absorption is variable, and the GI will depend on the status of your GI. Excretion 70 percent, 76 percent of it is excreted in urine, 16 percent in feces, and 8 percent in hair, sweat, and nails. The health effects is obviously it's non-essential and it doesn't have any function and it's actually toxic. The toxicity in children, you will see IQ declines, clumsiness, gait issues, headache, behavioral changes that are like bad ones, like negative ones, tantrums, fits, and all that. Seizures, um, cognitive and behavioral problems. In adults, you will see peripheral neuropathies motor weakness, chronic renal insufficiency, systolic hypertension, and anemia. And um, so you see here in old paints and stuff, and kids tend to put old paint chips in their, their mouths and stuff. But uh, the Flint, Michigan water crisis, when they switched their water source um, and then it was contaminated, so they increased uh, uh, chlorination of the water, and they, uh, that caused uh, the leaching of lead from lead pipes, and then you had like brown water that was full of lead and then you end up with lead poisoning in children and adults. Mercury, uh, it is released uh, to the atmosphere as a product of the natural degassing of rocks and through various human activities. It is used in dental amalgams, so your uh, silver fillings, electronic switches, germicides, fungicides, and fluorescent light bulbs. Um, exposure is through inhalation or ingestion, especially ingestion of fish like tuna fish. Uh, it can be also through cutaneous and uh, injection in tattoo pigments and, of course, through the dental fillings. Um, you will absorb about 80% of what is inhaled. Absorption in the GI tract is close to 0%. It will probably depend also on the state of your GI tract, and you excrete it uh, fecal and urinary. Uh, mercury is non essential, it doesn't have any function in the human body, and it can be considered toxic. The toxicity is primarily through reaction with sulfhydryl groups. Uh, inhale va vapor, you will get uh, signs and symptoms that affect your nervous, digestive, and immune systems. Uh, if it is ingested or exposure through inorganic salts, uh, it can affect the skin, eyes, GI tract, and the kidneys. Mercury intoxication can manifest many signs and symptoms that affect several organ systems. Those include headache, tremor, impaired coordination, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, dermatitis, polyneuropathy, proteinuria, and hepatic dysfunction, and ICPMS and cold vapor atomic absorption spectroscopy are ways to assess mercury levels. And that is your last slide. Thank you.